Hello and welcome. Current time is 10.30 p.m. Eastern on the 14th day of March 2021. My name is Derek and this is the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades, and amongst the like, well, that's each his own risk and their own reward. And this is going to primarily be that of a silver video price action coming in at $26.12. I'm going to Take a look at the uh, U.S. National Debt Clock, looking at the information that they have here towards that of silver, and that's pretty interesting, to say the least. And look at the market cap for things like silver, and talk about the silver and cryptocurrencies and all those sort of beautiful things. All right, so this is the daily chart, and I got these lines in. They just represent the yada yada Fibonacci. They do its thing. Multiple times before piercing extra starting on uh, right after the uh, September season change in September 24th. And then again uh, near Halloween and then again at the end of November. It, it pretty much hit it right on the nose for the most part on January the 19th. Well, it's the low that month, 2404. I guess piercing a little above it. And I don't remember if these are exact numbers or approximate numbers, as if it really matters. When you, and, then, and if it's in the general area, it's all about the same. I could have this number like 2347. It's just as good. But as it goes, the price since July of last year has been in a range bound market. The range on the low is 22. The high is 30. Not escaping it, of course. And right now at 26, $4 either way to get to the bottom or the top end of it. You pretty much say it's in the middle part of the range. So any of the technical analysis stuff, that's, I mean, that's just trading whatever. I mean, you can do this with silver, Bitcoin, AYB stock, or trade this, whatever. It's just if you're doing SLV or whatever vehicle for silver, you're just looking to return a return on investment that's greater and your bankroll to grow higher if you're doing any type of that type of game, in my opinion, anyway. But as I've mentioned so many times within these videos, if I had a safe and I could only put one asset class in it and I can't open that safe for two years, five years, or a significant but reasonable period of time, other than gold, which is a good, not an honorable mention, and even any of that, outside of precious metals, you know what? After that, I'd almost be going into collectibles before even cryptocurrencies because I just feel I'm safer with that. I don't know how safe cryptocurrencies are long term, of course. It's. Uh, a situation where people are going to be getting into it and have been in short term as we've seen a credible run well bitcoin has been going up all the other coins are going up and silver is not which means the ratio to these coins against silver is moving to the point where it's cheaper and cheaper i mean the amount of silver that i'm going to be buying with well with the, with the amount of theta that doesn't even have a comma on it which means under a thousand because i'm going to be making a silver buy very very soon fact that I just put a bit of coins together. Bitcoin Cash, I'm not a big fan of right now. So it's, for me, I just, I'm old school. And well, when I was talking about cryptos, old school, that is. And I'm not even, and I don't even feel I'm old school with it because I got into the game in 2017 for cryptos, start of the year. But for me, I remember the day Bitcoin Cash was born, I guess you could say. And I use a Trezor original hardware wallet, which is where I put my Bitcoin Cash in. And it's an annoying aspect to continuously have to go to a Bitcoin cash address converter so that I can, because uh, my Trezor address can't send to a Bitcoin cash that starts with the number one. So I have to do a conversion over. And then some exchanges I have to, uh, I have to take my address that starts with a Q and move it over to a one. It's like annoying. But not only that, but I've been waiting for a while for 11 confirmations and what's sick about it is, and I, I'm not a big fan of Bitcoin overall, and before, I guess you could say the problems 
take a long time for you to send it to an exchange and expect it to get there. I might have broke a record for maybe my second or fastest ever Bitcoin transfer. Because what happened was I first deposited Bitcoin cash. Then I went over and went to my Bitcoin. I deposited a little bit of Bitcoin. And then I go to my Poloniex deposits and I see, oh, my Bitcoin's there, ready to go. I can sell it on the market. All righty. And, and that was like literally just moments right after I did it. So it's like, okay. Now, if within Bitcoin and stuff like that, I mean, I look at big problems within like just so many different aspects within it. That really is kind of a scary situation. But thankfully, I don't have to play that game where I have to hold it and then wait so many years and. If Bitcoin, cryptocurrency prices keep doing this and the ratios against silver keep staying beautiful, in my opinion, towards this measure, well, what's going to be great is the amount uh, I'll be able to uh, take from the store into the car will be a lot larger. It's, it's not much of a problem now, but when the weights start to get to like 30, 40, 50 pounds, and that's, I mean, that's just, just saying that if theta goes like 20, 30, 50 dollars, what, what else am I supposed to do? And what I would do and what I am doing is, of course, getting the real physical, physical silver metal. You've seen in Bitcoin these incredible moves where prices went 6x from these $10,000 levels from, well, last year. Well, you figure back at this point in here, when silver was at its top, you could if you decide, oh, I want, should I buy silver? Should I buy Bitcoin? And then buy, try to get silver later. Well, now you can get six times more than the amount of silver, maybe seven times more, eight, whatever, compared to the, what you would have got before. Uh, when you look at, say, September, like, well, in here, September, back in the point when silver was at its highs. And these runs that we've seen, it's only a matter of time before very similar runs do occur within the physical silver market. And there is just a major rush for people to get into the real physical silver metal. Constitutional silver, 80%, 90%, and even 92.5% on the old Canadian coins. For the old dimes, quarters, half dollars, dollars. And then my favorite, the 999. Bars, coins, rounds. I believe there will be a big, big rush of people wanting to get into it. And my goal from day one of cryptocurrencies has always been thus as a means to an end. To be able to, one, trade the market so you can profit. Number two, I don't know for sure about this crypto game, but I realize that if I keep on controlling the bankroll, that I can turn thus into the physical silver metal. If I started buying silver, I'll, bring, I'll go back to the silver charts to uh, reference time. It would have been right around this candle here, March of 2008. About two Canadian maples, costing me 25 Canadian dollars each. Around this, before this crash, and I bought a bit here and there. I actually bought from Scotia Bank. I mean, I didn't really know how to buy silver too well, but I wanted to make sure I was doing it right. And boy, did I get a great buy. Because they gave me a lot of 2001s, but they gave me Canadian maples. And then the price goes down again. I And I ended up having a small little short bet on the market too. So I was able to turn that, buy some more silver, same deal, buy it from Scotia. But I never bought from them again. And as time went on, and I've, there was a small coin shop in town. And I've basically, well, that's where I bought that coin from. And here was a small coin shop. And basically I bought bottom out pretty much, I was around this in this top area. He just started running out of silver. And it got almost impossible to buy really anything other than, I mean, they, the numismatic, I'm not really not buying. I mean, he always has that. But, and even then, the selection wasn't too great. 
but a lot of it was just constitutional dollars and half dollars and such that you get very rarely. So, and I haven't seen the guy in years now. And then you'd find different people that would sell here and there. There's a uh, one channel, a person on YouTube, uh, Alex, uh, Alexis, I think, some guy who was had a little small business going and he sold and I bought from him. And then I found Silver Gold Bowl and they have just been fantastic. I've even found a place in Toronto that I went to to buy uh, uh, the physical silver and the brick and mortar in Scarborough, Ontario. Uh, so just being able to know, of course, uh, more and more as you go along. And well, from this point when I bought my first one up until in here, which would have been when I started trading cryptocurrencies, I bought silver pretty much every year. Well, every year for sure. However, I have, once I finished my buy anyway, I'll have purchased more in 2021 than I did up until this point. Well, then I'll have more bought in 2021 than my net inventory was when I made my first crypto trade. It's the numbers get bigger, yada, yada. Basically, a lot of that works within it. Because what has silver prices done in the last four years or so? Nothing much, really. It's went up from like, like 18 bucks to 26. That's a gain of like 30%. Meh. Literally, meh. There isn't much more else to say. Than meh. It's, and I've been saying a lot of it for a while that as long as silver doesn't have those magnificent moves, the price of silver is, for me at least, is becoming very, very cheap. Price could go to 30, 40, 50, but if theta goes to 20, 30, 40 dollars, Litecoin goes to 12, 1300, 2000. Bitcoin goes into the six figures and even maybe starts, then breaks a number that starts with the two or three after that, to basically a quarter million. And then again, silver does this, then it's going to be like, okay, I guess, oh my goodness, cryptocurrencies are worth that. I guess I better take this, sell this, buy this. Oh my goodness, now we're talking. Okay, how am I, I'm going to need help getting this out of, the, out of these, when I go to the post office, I'm going to need help getting this into the car now. I'll be, we'll get her done. I mean, those are, again, good problems to uh, look towards. And I've heard so much, I'm sure you have too, about the greatest transfer of wealth and how it would be coming. And I started hearing those words for the first time, probably even before the turn of the first decade in the century or before 2010. And when I first started hearing it, there was like, very little thought, of course, towards Bitcoin and any of that. But it does seem as if right now that it is something that is really coming into play. Now, what I personally am lacking within this channel, which I really got to find more towards what's going on, is how things are really working towards the masses, the everyday people. Because you can group them in so many different, especially if I talk about this in a financial savings category, and just that, so many different categories from worst, case, really bad cases to great cases. And then you look at the amount of people within those that practically have no precious metals and cryptocurrencies. If you have a little bit of gold, silver here that's in your jewelry format or some extra dollars and quarters laying around, no go. But how many of them with net savings of a thousand dollars, five thousand, ten thousand, fifty, hundred, quarter million, million, five million, ten million, fifty million, and so on, do have have zero assets into such. Now as time is moving on and none of them are doing this right now they're going to have to do something about the situation coming into play. Now, the bigger stacks, using poker terms, I like that for just normal bankroll management, but the people with larger savings numbers are going to be able to handle inflationary moves a lot easier because they have so much extra cash. 
So if it costs two, three, four times more for items and whichever it is that that cost like is today in the last year and so on, they can handle it. But at the same point, they're going to be easily part of the major class getting into things like gold, silver, and all of those uh, beautiful things, precious metals, all of different ones, and the cryptocurrencies, yada, yada. Then as the numbers go lower, someone's with savings from 40 million to 10 million, 5 million, 1 million, quarter million. The luxuries and situations become harder and harder for each of them to do. But still, when people have savings of six figures or better, then they most certainly have decisions that are going to be uh, something's gonna be they're going through when all when this stuff is going down because it seems more and more people at least are understanding the situation. I guess one thing that I do notice is I look at the ratings of videos on the internet, and one thing I keep in, keep my, my mind is the ratio of thumbs up to thumbs down a video will get, as well as how the percentage of thumbs up to views. Because when you get a situation when the thumbs up to views is very high, that's a kick-ass video. But when I'm seeing a lot of these mainstream videos, and I'm, I'm Canadian, so I get a lot, it's mostly the, mostly the Canadian feeds, like CTV, Global, CBC. Many of the videos have very good ratios on the downside of like, Two to three, two to five, two to seven, even. And a lot of these other, like Rebel News, is the uh, more local news that I listen, watch, and listen to. That is uh, affiliated in Canada and even Australia as well, and I think maybe a little bit in Europe, but mainly Canada. And for that matter, mainly in Toronto, Greater Toronto area, and I think the Greater Calgary area as well, or, or Alberta. So that's where most of that content comes from. And though, of course, their ratings are much higher than that. But a lot of the... Uh, if you're on the internet to be like... There's, just, there's not too many opposites of truthers or however you want to name it that are like, okay, I'm going to go out there and just be like big time on like all these CTV news channels, everything that's MSM and just look towards that on a conscious level. Like it's the same vote. No, not even close. Because if you, and what's interesting is just talking to people, if they ever get to, the, get to the situation about either the Bank of Canada or the Federal Reserve, how they're like, well, the Federal Reserve privately owned corporation and then the Bank of Canada, Crown Corporation, basically owned by the Queen. And then the fact that when you have dollars in your account, that's actually technically not yours. You don't own it. It's an account's receivable. And then they can take your deposits and then practically loan out, like create like nine times or pretty much close to 10 times what you have. And that you deposit, they can just print out a thin air, yada, yada, yada. And then you can work your ass off to try to pay off like what 8% or 4% or whatever you're paying off on interest. And then those damn credit card bills are 20 something percent. They're, they're curse. And then, well, they're just, that's just the debt based model within the fiat currency. More people, of course, waking up to all those multiple things. And yeah, I believe there's going to come a time very soon where we break out of this range to the upside and the moves are just, we'll, we'll see what happens as far as we've set the bar from the 70s. Leg higher, sideways, leg like this. This one here, boom, 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 sort of the same. And right now, you can almost be like, we compared to like a here. I mean, this thing is in the early breakout stages. You can almost almost say it's like they're like down even in here. I mean, it's just breaking out above the 18 on the monthly. This thing is, and we started this rally from like a buck and change. We started this rally from like four bucks and change, and, and we pretty much started this rally. We'll say from like 14. So anyway, like to 
thank you for tuning in. But again, why are you into silver? Why are you into whatever bit, uh, bet and whatever you're doing? And for me, the answer is silver because s simple silver, of course. It's simple. I know for sure that silver has major value as a commodity asset class. I, I mean, I could hold stuff like salt and just hold it somewhere, and it's going to could be good forever pretty much of course it's up to me to make sure that nothing spoils it like let's just store it well so that doesn't like nothing that gets dirty in it like you know like whatever you know get the idea and then i could hold oil but where am i going to put my oil just have like a thing in the backyard and just have like some sort of like some sort of tank and like have like no no i don't want to do that there really isn't too many real ass like commodities that you can hold like a raw material but silver is a magnificent one it's a monetary metal that that to me is just a magnificent and pretty much it is anyway and therefore by having silver as basically my main asset class why it's an anti play against a fiat dollar it's the most safest of all of the assets. I love its upside spectacularly so much over gold. I mean, for me, I'm buying dozens and dozens of ounces of silver, three figures. And as far as like a, like a cherry on top kind of deal, I'm getting a quarter ounce of gold within this purchase. Or like... Hundreds and hundreds of ounces of, sil of ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. Although there won't be one ounce, it'll be 0 0.25. Just something to really get my number to where I want to spend based on, okay, I'm selling this much Theta, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and uh, Litecoin. And therefore, I sold Theta for Litecoin. I'm going to sell Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash for Litecoin. I'm going to buy, buy my silver with Litecoin and by doing such I know in a few days I'll have to go to the post office and pick up real real assets now I'm not saying cryptocurrencies isn't real but they're only so tangible in my opinion I mean the tangible how t tangible is it it works the fact that I can hold my cryptos in the hardware wallet in the measures in the measures that I do is a huge asset for its tangibilityness. And like say your operating systems or any type of amazing technology that is there to that and that works, like just the internet itself as a design, however you want to look at it, that in itself is tangible. So what's it worth for like an operating system and stuff like that is it worth way too much i don't know anyway some other things i want to look at next up is the uh, u.s national debt and it's in at 28 trillion okay it is what it is when i go down to the right hand side on here Dollar to oil ratio now is $121 a barrel. It was $2.15 in 1913 when the Fed started, basically. Now, and the price of oil is, I haven't seen it in a while, but it's lower than that, but only so many X, not much lower than that. Price of silver is much lower than $4,929 per ounce. And 266 in 1913, which, you know what, it wasn't too, too far off from that back then. So, is silver a little undervalued right now at about uh, a couple dozen dollars? I think it is, of course. I mean, I'm obviously, it's my, fa my favorite asset class. My, obviously, the little picture that I have on my YouTube is a Canadian maple leaf coin. And I'm... I'm not a big fan of the Canadian Maple Leaf over the other coins. It's just I have to have a lot of them because I live in Canada. But, and it's silver. 
Anyway, the dollar to gold ratio, $35,000, and it was twenty-eight seventy-five before. Paper to silver ratio now, 187.52 to 1. Now, what does that silver ratio? I believe that was for every one ounce of silver that is, like, mined or something. There's, like, 187 in the paper game, I think. I guess something works something like that. Now, what the ratio, how this works is it's simply taking the amount of fiat dollars that were created over the last year divided by the amount of silver that was created over the last year. I mean, that's just a very easy, simple way of think of really getting good, good, good numbers, I think. So back then, when they took all the currency divided by the silver they created, it was two point six six. Now it's three four. It's now it's almost five thousand. Silver market cap they say is one point four trillion dollars. This is obtained by multiplying the current silver price at twenty six dollars an ounce with the amount of silver that is estimated to have been mined so far. And cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is 1.1, and the entire crypto game right now, 1.8. So you know what? They're pretty much about the same. And thus, I do believe tremendous buys. But again, you look at cryptocurrencies long term, I don't know about the state, and even short term, it is very overextended, but short term. Man, I think, especially with some of the altcoins, they're going to fly. Because there are some coins I just didn't sell today. Tezos, um, Hadara, um, what else? Everything but the ones that I said, I suppose. And later on, oh my goodness, Tezos does this. Well, just maybe I should buy some silver, I suppose. And oh wow, look how many I buy. That's the results in the game. I look at this as that I'm trying to uh, to get again. Like I mentioned, I've put it, I've been able to be able to buy more silver this calendar year than I was able to buy during several, several, several different times. And now all the all the days from March of 2008 up to I will even say like summer of 2017. And even from the amount that I've got higher, it's how many X times higher silver I've got from 2017. And it's, 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 it's growing pretty well, which is, I, got, I managed to get past my 1,000-ounce uh, goal way, way back ago. And now I'm working on towards my next goal, which is uh, where there's two numbers beside that comma, or that's, that's of 10,000 ounces. And that's the decent ways to go. But cryptocurrencies and the way things are going, who, who knows uh, how fast, if it will be accomplished. If I, I mean, if, not, who knows, maybe it sh will be accomplished and maybe relatively fast or faster than I may think. Because I never, ever would have thought 15 years ago that I'd be able to be able to do this. And even within stuff like, uh, well, what's going on with fantasy hockey right now and the mathematics to my grind, if you will, to my return on investment? Because if I would have went back to myself in 2002, 2001, and showed the results for what's going on, I'm like, yeah, that's damn cool. I can see me doing this. Yeah, for sure. It's been my goal, but I'm looking at the rate of return and looking, really, you can actually win that much in fantasy sports. Wow, that would be cool, I'd be thinking. And yeah, but it's probably going to be a time where you're going to want to just, especially after today with the Toronto Ottawa game, that was just a terrible, terrible situation in that game. But you're like, I, in the sense of, okay, I'm winning good, but you have a bad situation. And it was just the way the game went, how you lost. But how you're able to go through like all of these different games, create like a 60, 70 percent return on investment consistently when you're trying to get like 20, 30 percent. I mean, that's just a phenomenal situation. Then the trading aspect on here, 
because I wish I would have knew, knew as back in 2001 and two about the ideas of trading the market as an investment. And when I say investment, just like poker is an investment. Bending on sports traditionally, betting on this team to cover a spread, this to go over or under a total, that type of stuff, and you're building your bankroll higher. Again, when you look at the SLV and the GLD and stuff like that, that's a code. Sort of like all, the, all these cryptos to me, a lot of them are just pretty much codes. Only price pays though. So therefore, if I'm able to go to a market and then do this, withdraw this to this, and then when I go to a checkout to a place and they say, oh, you accept Bitcoin, Litecoin, okay, I'll, I'll agree to that. If I'm able to do that, then I'm able to do those sort of mechanism things. All right, I spent way too long rambling about things amongst that nature, and um, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to this video and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.